Hello Panthers, I'm Vanessa Morales. And I'm Colin Miller, and this is Pause Up TV. The area 151st in Biscayne is more congested due to the new developments caused by Solemia. Bailey Alfaro has more on this traffic story. Area 151 has recently become a high volume traffic area due to real estate projects such as Costco and Solomia, bringing a mass number of locals and tourists to the area. Oh yes it is. Actually we're one of the busiest locations in the southeast region itself. Um, you know, we, we could on an average day, low average right now, um, have anywhere between 4,500 members to 5,500 members in through the door each day. So. It, we're, we're, uh, <laughs> we're a pretty busy location. <laughs> Increased amounts adds to school traffic in the mornings and afternoons, forcing students and faculty to find alternative ways of arriving on time. It takes a while. I have to drive two hours and I don't, I don't even live in another county. I live in the same county as... I live in Miami-Dade. I'm still far. It's not even far. It's 13 miles from my house. So. But, I have to drive two hours to get here. The sudden increase impacts the community, making students and faculty late to class and other appointments. With 45 to 5,500 members a day, Costco's location in North Miami is their busiest. As you can see, Solomia is still currently under construction. However, apartments are still available for leasing now. Reporting for Florida International University, I'm Bailey Alfaro, South Florida Media Network. Thank you, Bailey. It's taking me a lot longer than usual to get to campus. How about you, Colin? Oh, I definitely agree, Vanessa. Traffic congestion in Miami is no joke. Uh, but climate change is also a major issue in South Florida. Many are still concerned about how much Florida International University is doing toward its sustainability efforts. Brody Castillo has the story. Climate change threatens the environment due to the sea level rise. Some questions FIU's effort to mitigate climate change. The faculty has been very active. And the faculty in um, really all of the departments has been um, teaching about, about sustainability and climate change, and have been engaged in research really across the university. The gas emission report that measures the carbon dioxide concluded that transportation is the number one factor affecting the air. Although FIU implemented a shuttle bus system with biodiesel to reduce carbon dioxide, little has been done to reduce the gas produced by these energy plant machineries. I think FIU could be doing a lot more than they are. And some students express the lack of communication. I would have never known FIU was doing something because plastic, 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 you know, like nothing has changed as it comes to the food, which is really what is causing the pollutants is all these food bags, all these plastic straws. So in that term, I don't see FIU doing any difference. The, our faculty should come to our class to talk about it and stuff and make us, you know, aware that FIU is doing stuff to help the environment. Despite all the effort that FIU is doing to protect the environment, it seems by many faculty and students as if the effort is not enough. The gas emission hasn't been tracked, which raises the concern of the FIU community. This is Brody Castillo reporting for South Florida Media Network. Thank you, Brody. Mammy's Art Week is going to be headlined by Florida International University's Patricia and Philip Frost Art Museum's exhibit, Art After Stonewall. The exhibit highlights the months rioting on the fight for equal rights. Sabina Petruno has more on the story. As the 50th anniversary of Stonewall riots come around, Florida International University's Patricia and Philip Frost Art Museum opened an exhibit honoring the LGBTQ community's fight for equal rights. According to the museum, this exhibit is called Art After Stonewall, 1969 to 1989, and Miami is one of the only three cities in the United States to host it. This is a place of education. This is a place to learn about history. And this is what Art After Stonewall, why is it so powerful? Because a lot of times people don't know about the queer liberation movement. People don't know the history, how like the first pride was a riot and how it was like, it was made this way by essentially trans people of color. 
The museum says that this is the first national museum show of its kind to survey the impact of the LGBTQ civil rights movement on visual culture. I love how explicit everything was because it's something that we're not used to seeing. Um, usually everything that is in the LGBTQ community, it's very like, what's the word? Like, uh, closed off and this made it feel more open and more comfortable. The museum also says that history was changed when police raided the Stonewall Inn and people decided to take a stand and fight back for equality. This exhibit recognizes the fact that these artists had to have guts and grit to make these public statements about gender and sexuality in a primarily homophobic world. The exhibit made me feel a lot more inclusive in FIU and um, I just feel like they support, they help support us in the community. Art After Stonewall is an exhibit that's brought students and the outside community together to show pride in the fight for equal rights. This has been Sabrina Petruno for the South Florida Media Network. Now back to you. Thank you, Sabrina. I'll be visiting the exhibit before it closes in January. Me too. FIU's Aquatic Center has taken initiative to teach students how to swim. Instructors say that the proximity of the water represents a safety hazard for students who do not know how to manage in the water. Our weather anchor, Nayeli Lomeli, has more. Swimming has become a necessary life skill in this area surrounded by water, and FIU has taken steps to help students learn through swimming lessons. You know, we have a lot of students that are, are, that are coming to learn to swim, to learn it as a necessary life skill. So that, that is, um, areas of concern where the, the student may be concerned about potentially drowning or that they're going on a trip where they've never been around um, water spring break or something like that or you know just living on campus and kayaking and being around the water there you know over the years we've 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 seen the need for a student to be able to learn how to swim as a life skill uh, i've been able to get more comfortable with breathing uh, that was my that was my whole reason for coming uh, and taking lessons in the first place. I could swim, but I could tell there was something off because I was always gasping for a breath, even just doing a couple laps. Swimming is essential because of beaches, pools, things of that sort. So I think this is a very good resource uh, for FIU students. The lessons don't only teach a life skill. They also help alleviate the stress of heavy semesters. It's it's sort of a um, a, a, a therapy therapeutical recreational based exercise um, that that kind of assist uh, supplements them while they study. Um, it makes them healthier. Um, it's a great recreational mode of exercise. It's a great cardiovascular exercise. So we have a lot of students that come and meet with an instructor to get that guidance. So to learn how to perfect their skills, to learn how to develop swimming, so that it's hand in hand with their with their student life. Next year, the pool will be closing for six weeks for remodeling, but the date has yet to be confirmed. For those interested in signing up for swimming lessons, email Barry Tucker, the aquatic supervisor, in the email down below. This has been Ayeli Lomeli reporting for South Florida Media Network. Welcome everyone to Panther Sports. I'm Sabrina Petruno. And I'm John Prasad. Sabrina, did you hear about the basketball coach making history here at FIU? Yeah, I did. First year at FIU and already making big moves. That's right. Let's meet the coach breaking all these records. During his first year on the sidelines at FIU, Ballard guided the Panthers to a 20-14 record and a 10-8 mark in the CUSA play. The team's 20 wins marked just the third time in school history that FIU logged 20 or more victories and were tied for the second most in a single season. Yeah, I was very proud of that. Um, last year was our first season and we set a lot of records, um, a, a lot of statistical records and more importantly we set a lot of records for winning uh, most most Conference USA wins in school history as you mentioned. Uh, we also had the first postseason win in school history and we had the second most wins in school history. So I'm really proud of that for my guys. I'm happy for them because of how hard they've worked. Um, how much they've sacrificed and how much they put into us being successful. So I'm excited about this season and, and hope we can break those records that we set last year. That story is a slam dunk, just like our next one. Two FIU baseball alumni have hit it out of the park. They credit hard work in the baseball program here at FIU for their success. You can catch them playing in the minor leagues. Reporter Anna Valencia has their stories. <laughs> Thank you. 
FIU, with an average graduation rate of 54%, is home to about 20 minor league baseball players since the year 1973. And these minor league graduates are the stories of Andres Nunez and Eddie Silva. Andres is now playing for the Kansas Lexington Legends and Eddie for the Carolina Mudcats. I never really wanted to give up or anything, but it was hard at points, but I just fought through it. We are at the baseball field where it all started, where Andres Nunez and Eddie Silva worked hard and practiced to achieve their current goals. They came with a pedigree, with a, with a winning pedigree, a winning attitude. Uh, of course, to win championships, you have to be a, a, a hard worker. And although both athletes suffered arm injuries, they continue to work hard for their future careers. It wasn't an easy one for sure. Uh, being able to wake up every day at 8 a.m. and you know start your day off with therapy is not what you really want to do when you're in college and you got class after. And then on top of that, you got to go to practice and watch everybody else. His goal is to have a healthy career of 10 years as a successful major league player. Way to step up to the plate, Anna. Riding along through, the FIU equestrian team does not horse around when it comes to training season, school, and safety. When it comes down to it, this team knows how to saddle up. Reporter Carlos Castillos has more. FIU equestrian team competes at several horse shows. The team has training sessions every Tuesday and Thursday. Every year we actually compete um, in Ocala at the University of Florida's facility. Uh, we also compete in Savannah, Georgia at the uh, Savannah College of Art and Design, as well as Florida State University. Um, for the team members, they usually only ride for one hour. We have like a lesson where we train for one hour straight, uh, practicing so we can get ready for our horse shows. Ideally, they ride two days a week, if possibly three, but most of them ride one to two days a week because they have a lot of work at school and it's unfortunately a bit of a drive. I teach them how to walk, trot, canter, do small jumps, and to do everything in the correct position, which is, in our case, equitation is what they compete in, and hopefully get them ready and strong enough to, to represent. Lauren gives some steps to join in the FIU equestrian team, and she usually trains more on Tuesdays. There are a few safety steps for the riders that she tells before getting on the horse. Yeah, so it's important that when you ride horses that you always have a helmet to protect your head because um, you're high off the ground, so it is good for you. Uh, also, you need some boots. For the horse, you need to have a saddle and a bridle. The bridle is what you use to go on its face to help control where it goes, just kind of like an assistant. Clara was the champion of the week and has gone for several competitions. Recently, she has been to Savannah, Georgia and won third prize in a horse show for FIU. I don't believe in that. I believe in horsemanship. That's why I love the sport so much, because you have a partner. If you have a partner, you need to be able to take care of it. Clean their feet. Uh, if they have like uh, disease, if they have bacteria, you just take care of them. FIU Equestrian team competes in horse shows all throughout Florida and Georgia. After all the effort, the team still has to maintain and take care of their horses. This is Carlos Castillo reporting for South Florida Media Network. Thank you, Carlos. Now, let's toss it back to you, Colin. Thank you, Sabrina. In the past year, the number of emotional support animals has increased in FIU's on-campus housing. With the stress of life and classes and being far away from home, students seek the comfort in their four-legged friends. Here is reporter Shrishti Jaswal with their experiences. Sit. Good boy. Sit. Out of 3,696 students living on campus at Florida International University, only 120 students have their emotional support animals registered. So an emotional support animal is an animal that offers comfort in a way that nothing else can to an individual who might have a um, psychiatric or mental disorder. Service animal can help with like if you have a seizure disorder, uh, di um, diabetics, um, people with PTSD. These dogs are trained to pick up on very subtle nonverbal things. Christina says Baxter gives her company as she deals with anxiety and depression. He keeps me grounded, the way I can focus on my daily activities, like going to school, planning, like I have more like of a freedom in my mind. I don't feel so like pent up. Stephen felt lonely after he moved away from his family and Nala became his home. 
I was just pretty much alone. And that aloneness kind of, you know, got to me sometimes. The procedure to get an emotional support animal on campus is, first, you need a memo that states you are under a treatment plan, and second, you need a letter from your doctor. To get an emotional support animal on campus for Madison was an easy process. It was really easy. <laughs> it was actually easy um, because I was already going to therapy on campus. When I was lonely before, I would go into my creative outlets to try to help me. And I was also going to therapy more. I've definitely gone to therapy less. But for others like Abigail, it was a difficult process. It was a difficult process with FIU because they're very particular about what's in the letter. My family moved away and I ended up getting to keep Piper, so it worked out, it kind of balanced itself out. When she moved in, it helped with them being gone. The number of emotional support animals has increased in Florida International University over a period of time. Emotional support animals are not allowed in classes, but students living on campus housing can have them after the approval of Disability Resource Center. This is Trishti Jaiswal with Baxter reporting for South Florida Media Network. Thank you, Shristi. School certainly can be stressful sometimes. When it rains, it pours. Speaking of rain, let's go to weather. Hello Panthers, Nayeli Lomeli here with your forecast. On Monday will be a mix of sun and clouds with a high of 82 degrees and a low of 75. Tuesday will be fairly sunny with a high of 84 and a low of 72. Wednesday will be partly cloudy with a high of 77 degrees and a low of 73 and a 10% chance of rain. Thursday will be mostly rainy with a 50% chance of rain throughout the day and temperatures at a high 72 and low 69. For Friday, we have a high 72 and a low 67 and there is still some rain with a 30% chance for the afternoon. For this weekend, no more rain, but we are expecting a cold front. Saturday will be a windy day with winds moving at 20 to 30 miles per hour with a high of 65 and a low of 54. Sunday will be mainly cloudy, with a high of 63 and a low of 52. Make sure you keep a sweater handy during the weekend and enjoy your day. Thank you for that, Nayeli. I will definitely carry a jacket with me. Yeah, me too. And now here's a story of a 24-year-old FIU alumni who didn't let a car accident stop him from graduating. His persistence after the tragedy helped him earn his bachelor's degree in psychology. Reporter Janet Alonso has more. In 2018, Jordan Almendral graduated from FIU after surviving a catastrophic car accident that almost took his life. The driver was making a left-hand turn. There was a car coming and we collided. And since I wasn't wearing my seatbelt, I got ejected and landed on the, on the street. Jordan suffered damage to his spine that left him in a wheelchair, taking away his dream of one day becoming a professional baseball player. Despite of the circumstances, nothing seems to stop him in life. He has strength, um, mind, spirit, and physical strength to persevere. And with God's help, all things are possible. So that's how we keep going forward. This academic advisor helped Jordan complete his education. In the sense of other students that I've met, um, he really valued his education and the time that he was there. Graduating FIU, I remember, it. I told you this, this is probably the best, my, this is my biggest accomplishment thus far in life or post-injury. I, I, like, I tell people that the accident took enough from me that I'm not gonna let that stop me. I wanna continue my studies and become a sports psychologist and help as many people overall in life that are going through anything. After this tragedy, Jordan has been able to graduate with the recognition as a world ahead graduate and is looking forward to inspire others in life. Jordan says he is now feeling better than ever and is progressing daily. This is Jeanette Alonzo reporting for South Florida Media Network. Thank you, Jeanette. Next is the successful journey of a former FIU janitor who is now a custodian manager. Her story is undoubtedly a message of inspiration for everyone. Shrishti Jaswal with more. Victoria, this is Tony. Come back. Deborah joined Florida International University as custodial on October 18, 1996. She's now the custodial manager for FIU. When you're cleaning, they look at you as if you're nothing, as if you, you know, 
You don't have an education. You're not smart. You're dumb, you know. And in that case, I know that wasn't me. It's just that I love cleaning. So I said, okay, one day I'm going to become a supervisor. And I'm going to treat people and make them feel important. And I, that's just what I did. But I took it to another level. I'm a manager now. On a Christmas weekend, Deborah was assigned to clean the toilets at FIU. When I came that Saturday morning. I went to the ladies' restroom. And um, someone was very sick. Uh, there was feces, human feces all over the wall, the toilet. The next day, that Sunday, the same thing happened in the men's restroom. And at that moment, and it was worse in the men's restroom, at that moment, I began to cry. Can you imagine if you guys did not do your part or clean for three days, how dirty this place would be, how nasty the restrooms would be, the garbage would pile up. So I try to make them understand how important they are, that they are the, the U and FIU, because without them, this place would be a mess. Thank you, Shristi. It's definitely an inspiration. And now to wrap it up on a musical note, creativity in FIU has no boundaries. Check out FIU's new rising band formed by a group of music students out of a class project. These students have already made appearances in radio stations and local entertainment venues in Miami. My co-anchor, Colin Miller, has the story. Let's raise a glass for Slim Glasses. One, two, three. Slim Glasses is a band that is made up of music students who met by chance for a project at Miami-Dade College. However, the band claims that it wasn't until the majority of its members started to attend classes at FIU's School of Music that their sound really evolved. Uh, we take a lot of that musicality that we developed there and try to implement it in the band, as well as stuff that we work on on our own. So now we were able to kind of bring some of those harmonies and definitely vocal technique as well. Um, I think we've all really improved as singers since taking those classes. The band has been making a name for themselves all across the Miami music scene, from multiple cafes and clubs to even a few radio spots. Now, you know, playing four-hour shows and, you know, we don't, we don't really feel it. We're just enjoying the time together. Although the band has seen many successes so far, they still believe that their biggest success is developing their dynamic together, not only as musicians, but as friends. At the end of the day, it's about getting to know each other personally, musically, and building that relationship with each other so that no matter what crowd, whether we're performing for a crowd of 200 or if it's one person, that we're still speaking to them. One thing that audiences have taken away from some glasses is their musical variety. And I really like that there's variety because when you think of a band like Motley Crue, you think rock. When you think of Queen, you think rock. But when you think of some glasses, there's a bunch of genres that you can mix with them, and I think that's really cool. The band also has many plans regarding the future. We want to put out uh, our music and distribute it uh, across the platforms like Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, and whatnot. We also want to start touring. As you can see Christopher and Eric demonstrating here, it's thanks to harmony and compositional know-how that makes Slim Glasses a musical force in the Miami music scene. For the South Florida Media Network, this has been Colin Miller. Colin, I would love to see you dancing to one of their songs. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I got two left feet. <laughs> well, that is all we have for you today. I'm Vanessa Morales. And I'm Colin Miller. Until next time, Panthers, here on Pause Up TV for the South Florida Media Network.